Hey y'all, Andrew Finney here. The housing market of 2023 won't be like any we've seen before. I'm cutting out all the fluff in this video to get to the point. So let's talk about what seems likely to happen with housing inventory, home prices, mortgage rates, rental rates, and market conditions. The truth is probably different than what you might've heard. Full disclosure, I'm not some kind of wizard that has a crystal ball looking into the future. So please take what I say with a grain of salt and at face value. I'm just a student of life and a real estate nerd sharing openly my thoughts with you about the 2023 housing market. The housing inventory levels in 2023 will rise, but it will take time. For reference, a healthy housing market averages around 2 million to 2.5 million active listings nationwide. As of recording this video, the United States currently has roughly 1.28 million homes for sale as shown in this graph. How quickly we'll see the housing shortage gap close will depend on how many homeowners decide it is a suitable time for them to sell. Now look, I know people love talking about timing the real estate market and making a fortune like they'll be the next wealthy real estate mogul. And yeah, I mean, for all intents and purposes, that could happen for anyone if they plan it out and have a strategy in mind. But the reality for most of us is that most people buying and selling homes have more to do with lifestyle decisions than purely monetary ones, like where they are in their life when they decide to sell or buy a house. As much as some people like to view real estate through an economic lens like it's a commodity, that's simply not the case for most of us, and that's the truth. For instance, let's consider some common reasons people move. Then let us know in the comments if you can relate with any of the reasons. For example, common motivations to move include getting married, having kids, moving to a better school zone so their kids can get a better education, job relocation, divorce, health reasons, hardships, and being closer to family, just to name a few. For these life-changing reasons and the reasons we'll discuss in a moment, housing inventory could reach around 1.8 million to 2 million active listings nationwide by the end of 2023. Because time is always in motion and people's lives are constantly changing. Of course, an argument can be made that there are better times to buy or sell a house when looking at a long-term graph that spans many years. The issue with that is long-term graphs rarely align with where we are in life at the time that we have the opportunity to buy or sell a house. Real estate speculators seem to overlook a critical fact affecting most of us. They fail to consider the opportunity cost of time. Now, to be fair, some investment gurus might discuss strategies to hedge risk and ensure reasonable return rates that could outperform the real estate market. It's certainly possible. For that to work, the investment savants also assume a minimum of three details that might not apply to everyone. Like one, you can maintain the roof over your head whether you're renting or owning a home. Or two, you have the available cash to invest, or three, you are comfortable with the risk profile of the investment tactics they teach. Now, you might have noticed I didn't mention anything about having the knowledge to make it all work because I'm sure they have a course they're happy to sell you. I can sell it. Can you sell it? Okay, so let's take a look at home prices. Because of the tight supply of homes and the uptick in mortgage interest rates, the housing market will inevitably correct. Nationwide, we're probably looking at somewhere between 15 and 25% off peak prices that we saw in June 2022 within seven to 18 months of recording this video. The time frame and rate of depreciation remain unchanged from previous videos I've created earlier in 2022. For reference, the median home price in the United States peaked in June 2022 at around $414,000. Look, I'm not asking you to take my word for what might happen. Instead, I'm asking you to stay true to yourself by taking a step back from all the rhetorical chaos you might see so that when you have clarity, you can begin thinking through your decisions and what makes sense to you or not. It's your life. You live it how you want. Yes, some real estate markets will see steeper drops and yet others might not be affected as much. This is normal as people seek affordable housing and better employment opportunities as their lives change. At the same time, it is vital to remember real estate markets move in cycles. Some cycles are up, some cycles are down, and some are right in the middle. In my assessment, average home prices must come down to align with what an average home buyer can afford in a given area. But unfortunately, this fundamental and others went way off the proverbial rails over the past couple of years. Here we are now, enduring the cooling off period of an overheated real estate market. The housing market we've seen over the past few years was propped up by historically and artificially low federal funds rate. As we now know, that resulted in unnaturally low mortgage rates 
easy access to credit, and a surge in consumer spending. All of this at a time when the world endured unprecedented supply chain issues resulting from COVID. Given the extremely high demand for goods and services with limited availability, in part, that is a substantial cause of the highest inflation rate we've seen in the United States since 1982. To combat this, the Fed, who previously seemed asleep at the wheel, has since woken up. In their haste to reduce the inflation rate, they are now dramatically and aggressively raising the federal funds rate with varying economic consequences. Unfortunately, the impact of the Fed's policies is not so pleasant for most of us. To say it another way, it's almost like the Fed is similar to an inexperienced driver that lost control of the driving wheel and started veering off the road. Go Hazel Basil! Go Hazel! Whoa Hazel! Instead of regaining control in a measured and methodical way to steadily get back on the track, they are now jerking the wheel in a massive overcorrection in too short of a time. Oh my God! Realistically, the Fed should have started slowly hiking the Fed funds rate at at least by January 2021, if not sooner. Now they are overreacting to get back on the road. Hopefully the Fed doesn't yank it so hard that they crash the American economy into a painful recession on the opposite side of the road. We know inflation remains stubbornly high and the Fed aims to reduce inflation to around 2%. The Fed has a complex task that requires delicate maneuvers to reduce inflation while minimizing the risk of a complete economic recession. How will they pull that off? Well, we'll see. It's important to note when the Fed adjusts the federal funds rate, it does not always correlate directly with mortgage rates. However, in 2022, we did see a correlation between Fed rate hikes having a pronounced impact on mortgage rate. Whether that remains to be true in 2023 remains to be seen. Currently, mortgage rates are hovering in the sevens. However, it's no secret that the Fed might continue increasing the federal funds rate in 2022 and into 2023. This might result in higher mortgage rate. As of recording this video, the federal funds rate is floating between 3% to 3.25% as seen in this trading economics chart. However, suppose that the Fed's 2022 performance indicates what they might do in 2023. In that case, we might see a federal funds rate peaking around 5.25% to 5.5% before moderating later in the year. Right now, people are talking about mortgage rates in the sevens. However, over 2023, we might see mortgage interest rates cresting in the nines or possibly even the tens if the Fed keeps this up. If that sounds bad, consider this. Depending on how old you are, you might remember that we've seen this happen in years past. For example, in 1990, the average mortgage rate was around 10.13% before adjusting to about 6.94% in 1998. Even in the 2000s, mortgage rates kicked off at around 8.04% in 2000, and later by the end of 2009, in the wake of the Great Recession, mortgage rates were in the high fives. So the relatively anemic mortgage interest rates that we've seen over the past few years are not normal. If you want to go deeper into mortgage rate history, then check out the historic 30 year fixed rate mortgage charts from 1971 to 2022 on sites like Freddie Mac or Fred Economic Data. Now, I don't know about you, but that did make me curious about the historic average mortgage rate. So I did the math to make it easy for you. And if I'm being a little bit honest, it's because I'm a little bit nerdy too. So the 51 year average mortgage interest rate in the United States is approximately 9.08% as of recording this video. So it stands to reason we could see that happen again. So if you're on the fence about whether you should buy or sell a house in 2023, the question becomes, how will you make that decision? Some say they'll stay right where they are and wait for the downturn in the housing market and wait for better mortgage rates. Okay, that might work, but it might not. Let me explain. There is no wrong answer here. It's your life, so you decide what is best for you and what is right for you. Will home prices and mortgage interest rates eventually come down? Of course, they will at some point. Everything that goes up comes down. This, it's gonna happen. So it's not a question of if it'll happen, it's a question of when will it happen? Which brings up the next question. Where do you live now? Do you own a home or do you rent? Depending on your answer, waiting might be an excellent option for you or it might not. 
This goes back to the opportunity cost of time we discussed earlier in this video. If you own a home and you don't have any plans to move, your job is secure and all is well in your life, then sure, waiting might be a perfect solution. If that's your case, then stay where you are, love your life and do your thing. But consider this for one moment. When home prices come down, and they will, the value of your home will also be lower than the current pricing. I'm not sure if that will affect your life plans, but it is worth knowing. Now, if you're renting, consider this. According to the Federal Reserve of Dallas, rental rates are projected to increase by 5% to 7% before moderating later in 2023. Zumper reports that the national median rent price for a two bedroom property is around $1,845, which they say is an all time high. Now, suppose someone you know could buy a house, but wants to wait it out for a couple of years. I mean, why not? Why not let the housing market balance? Why not let mortgage rates come back down the earth? And why not wait and see what happens with the economy and hoping that it'll be in a better place by then? Makes sense to me. But what will it cost you? The roller coaster of real estate never sleeps. When an opportunity presents itself to one group, it often takes the same opportunity away from another group. Very seldom do we have a balanced real estate market where good opportunities exist for most people simultaneously. While the housing market likes to repeat itself in one form or another, what does not repeat itself is where you are in your life at the time when you're making the decision to buy or sell a house. People gossiping and speculating about the real estate market is all fun and games until it's your turn. Then it just got real. Then the need for trustworthy real estate information and education becomes essential. The truth of real estate is this. The best time to buy or sell a home is when the time is right for you for the reasons important to you in your life. The one thing that none of us can ever get back is time. So please stay true to yourself and don't lose yourself in the chaos of life. So what might the 2023 housing market look like? For the reasons we reviewed in this video and in previous videos I've created, it seems likely that by the summer to fall of 2023, the real estate market could shift into a buyer's market. It won't be an easy market for anyone. It'll have both opportunities and challenges. So if you're a seller, review the best pricing tactics, market conditions, and marketing strategies with your realtor. If you're a buyer, take time to form a winning game plan with your realtor and your loan officer. And please be sure to ask your loan officer about any special mortgage programs they might have if you choose to proceed with buying a home. The reason I mention that is there's a lot of creative approaches out there that are offering opportunities to hedge for potentially higher mortgage interest rates and then a quick deceleration of those rates going back down. So they're offering some programs out there that let's say that you had a mortgage at like 7.5%, but then the mortgage drops to let's say 6%. They'd give you the opportunity to refinance the mortgage. So it's still going to cost you a little bit of money. That's how refinances work. It's just going to be less money than a traditional refinance. It's still worth exploring that option with your loan officer to see if that shoe fits well for you. Now, if you want help finding a highly skilled realtor to work with you in a quickly changing real estate market, then please get in touch with my friends over at homeandmoney.com forward slash Andrew. They'll help you get this right. Thank you. Now you might be thinking, should you buy or sell a house in a shifting real estate market with an uncertain economy? So click here to find out the questions to think through before making your move. I look forward to seeing you in that video. If not, I'm sending you positive vibes. Everything goes your way until I see you again.